Yo. Yo. What's up, man? <laughs> oh, man, just chilling in the sun, man. I'm at the park. Doing well. How are yeah. you? I'm all right, man. Uh, yeah, my bad about the delay, man. I, um, I had uh, the dude that was going to, that's, that's, that I was trying to get to buy my property, um, he coming out here on Wednesday to check it out. So I had to get on my shit and look into fucking uh, the places I had to connect with the people that I was trying to buy property from because. You know, as soon as I get the money from my spot, I'm I'm out of here. So I gotta get another place to go to. Cool. You, you got like a, you know exactly what you're looking for. You're still kind of just like looking around. I had gotten contact with some people that was selling. There's a lot in uh, there's two lots I want to check out because I'm gonna drive across the country. If I sell a place, I would sell a place. I would go to uh, sell a place and then go across Nebraska and Iowa. And I was thinking somewhere. Somewhere either in Nebraska or Iowa for one of the lots, and then I want to get another lot in South Carolina. Okay. That's those specific spots. Yeah, I like uh, I like uh, Western South Carolina for the the, the cooler months, and then I like uh, you know uh, the Midwest for the summer. I still I still don't think I want to be. In South Carolina for the summer, but maybe I would. I don't know. I, I just, I also, just, I just want to have another place to go to, just to for a bug out spot. Nice. Yeah, you can kind of bounce, bounce back and forth. That's that's, a, that's kind of nice. That sounds nice. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was kind of cool. It was kind of like sudden. The guy was like, "Yeah, man, I'm definitely gonna be out there Wednesday." So I was like, I was like, yeah. So you got the you got the money in hand or whatever, and he was just like, yeah, you know, I could do this all at once. And I was like, where? Cool. Well, then I need to get, I need to get back in touch with these people. <laughs> Shit, that's exciting, bro. Yeah, want to move forward. Yeah, it's been a lot. How long have you been in the lot that you're at currently? Uh, the end of 2011. So. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to, um, to 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 experience something else. I've, it, it made a lot of sense when I first got here, but it's making less and less sense every day. So I feel like it's just time to, you know, switch with someone that does make sense for. And now it's making sense to go to the next part. Yeah, you know the the, the guy the guy that wants to buy it, it makes sense for his life. And then, and then probably whoever's selling whatever I get, you know, they probably it probably doesn't make sense for their life to keep it. <laughs> so, man, it's cool how it's just life just is rearranging itself. Yeah, yeah, just something to to parlay, you know, learn learn some stuff. Like I feel like I learned stuff here. I learned a bunch of stuff how to how to live uh, pretty rugged to where I feel like I could go. I'm confident I could go anywhere. That you know, that's just undeveloped. Because like when I got here, it was really, really nothing here. So like, and the cabin was really fucked up. The the the, the roof was caving in and everything. So I feel like I've been, you know I learned a bunch of things since I've been here. You know, replace the roof and did some things. I'm like, man, it's uh, it's definitely um, taught me a lot. I feel like it just was kind of like training for wherever I do go. Yeah, I can't imagine how much you learned in 10, 10 years on just living like that with that land. You probably got a connection to it, too. It's going to be like leaving a person, man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know, I mean, everything. I feel like everything that wants to keep that when I think about staying, though, it's, it's not anything that makes me like it's not anything that motivates me to like to be alive. Really, it's all just things that's like sadness. And I mean, it's a lot of sadness triggers. I feel like here at this point, like. You know, when I first was here, I was excited to be here. And I was like, this is just really exciting and nice. And I want to do this. And I like, I wanted to learn certain things. And then like, I learned certain things. I got really in touch with the land, like to where I kind of know everything that's going on to where it's like, I need to go experience something else. You know, like, yeah. I know, like, it's just like, you know, it, every time anything happens i like I, I it's like not a mystery to the point where i'm just like ah, i kind of should maybe go somewhere I, something new something different 
some new challenges. It just, I see that it's just like a micro, like a micro cycle in eternity as we just move on. We keep moving on from experiences. I don't know how long we've been doing this. I know. I don't even know how you measure some of this stuff, but <laughs> it's like, uh, I wonder how many like dreams down we are. I really do. Like, I wonder how many levels it is, man. Like, uh, you know, from the from the source level or whatever, from the from the from the uh, from the heavenly level or whatever the fuck to go down into these. I, I feel like it's. It's not even one. It's not like it's one dream back. I feel like it's like a few dreams down from from like reality. I don't, it's like, I, you know, like down yeah. or up too. It's like is there how, yeah. how do directions even work? Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know. I just don't know what to say. I got to get a different word. I mean, it's wild looking looking at like diatoms and shit. Like, have you? I don't know. Like. Imagine it, life evolving itself and you, you being that, you know, through cycles on cycles from like amoebas. But I don't even know. what. How do you feel about the whole evolution view? Like, what the fuck is that? I guess when you die, you, you're going back into the mineral kingdom state of consciousness. And then you're going from that mineral kingdom state of consciousness probably back to like the plant state or the mushroom plant state. And then like from there to animal kingdom and then from animal kingdom to the sapient kingdom. I don't know. I think that, the, that it kind of probably all happens in a flash, though. Or, like, relative to you as the dreamer, it's like a flash. Like, your, your mineral kingdom state is just like, you know, it might be, I don't know, however long it takes for your body to decompose, but it might that might just feel like a flash to your consciousness and then now you're going from the mineral state to uh, plant being, you know, being absorbed by plants, and you're in a plant. Your consciousness is in plants now. That might feel like I don't know how long, you know, that could be a blank too. And then the animal state, you know, you get eaten by an animal or something, eaten by insects. The insect gets eaten by a reptile. The reptile gets eaten by a bird. You know, snakes get eaten by birds and stuff. But then the you know, whatever, however that loop goes, and then you're like, man, you know, your consciousness gets through that. That might be like a flash. Because I, I don't know. It's all relative in that sense, like in time. I don't really yeah. know how you could like measure that. It's, it's physics. I swear there's physics about it that are like available now. You just name like all, all the categories, but something in me is intuitively, I feel like, might be out of order. Like, because because I'm pretty sure the mushroom mushrooms predate plants in the galaxy, and I also I got the words together finally too, as far as like you know from the planetary level to the interplanetary level, which is like between planets, and then the interstellar level, which is in between stars, and then the intergalactic level, which is in between galaxies. And it's like i can see i can see how that's working and then you know in the in the on the intergalactic level mo- all the kingdoms of you know biological material and matter organizing itself mushrooms seem to be the oldest in the ga- in the in galaxies and then there's plants or maybe yeah. it's mineral is the minerals then plants then animals yeah i don't know i remember yeah, i remember sebi saying that when you know he was promoting mushrooms over meat he was like, you know, the mycelium come down to the earth. So, yeah, he's saying they're coming down from the ether. So, I mean, um, I don't know. I just remember, I know, I know Farrell always used to say as well that uh, time is sound cubed. So, and, you know, sound and light can't really be separated. So, I don't know. I guess it's just the cubing of sound is what creates the, the relentlessness of time. I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know how you I mean, because time is like a thing in itself. So it's like a funny thing, like as far as measuring with time when it's a thing itself. Mm-hmm. And like movement, I, I, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure movements, movement and time are the same. It feels like. Yeah, like how you can't really separate space and time because. If you're saying like one second, two seconds, three seconds, then it's like 
those are all spaces between each other or between some other thing. You know, like if if it's like if you're counting seconds, the seconds are also time. I mean, they're also they're also space. They're also spaces. So I don't know, like you know, what I mean? but so then it's like space is is measurable because it's it space is a thing that's what it has to be between or beneath or below some other thing. You know what I mean? Because like, how can you measure something if it doesn't have a beginning or ending? That's why I swear movement has something specifically to do with it. Like, if it was stillness, if there's complete stillness and nothingness in the void, and there's no, there's nothing to be relative to in that nothingness, it's, pro- it's going probably beyond the mind. And then when we're even coming in and mentioning seconds themselves, now we're dealing with the mind, and just I feel like even the movement of the ma- of your mouth or the movement of your like psychic energy while you count just counting itself the movement of counting or the move like the movement of your lips or the sound waves coming like when you're counting out loud that's like creating time but if you were still there's no time yeah and it's like and it's like every yeah and it's like everything creates the other thing and they need each other in a sense like uh i don't know like in, i remember like in the matrix i think it was the third one when the architect is like yeah, I, he's like I couldn't I couldn't think of that because honestly I I'm bound by perfection so I needed something less perfect to think of that. Hmm. Yep. And so I think that yeah, some that that's kind of like how it, I guess the perfection needed the imperfection so to even have yeah like a separation or like movement because the perfection would be just still because it's like perfect. Why would I have to move? Like I, I don't, you know, like I don't, I don't see like eternity. what the, huh? Oh, that's eternity. That just seems like eternity. Just yeah, like it's, 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 yeah, it's like it seems not. I don't. Wanna, I guess you could say fixed, but yeah, it's kind of like, why would it move? Why would it need to move? Like it's like unstoppable force and immovable object. It's kind of like both at the same time. I guess I don't even. That's how it's out of time. That's how it's like not even in time, but it's but then the movement you step getting get stepping outside of stillness, which is just going in movement. That's what sets everything in motion. And then once it's moving, that's where all this time, all these the time just is that's it's the same thing. The movement and the time are the same thing, it seems like. Yeah. because um, you you gotta have and but then I don't know how you can separate space from time. So, but I guess the things aren't separate. It just, it just is what it, the fuck it is. I guess somehow it's like another layer to isness. <laughs> well, this is where physics comes in. I swear, I'm, I can't, I can't recite the equations right now. But it has definitely, it definitely has something to do with like the golden mean ratio, the speed of light. Um, you know, the, like there's physics for sure that are like behind gravity. And gravity and movement and time themselves, like that's why I, I'm I'm getting I'm I'm working on internalizing these things so I can like make more spiritual moves. But but yeah, and the same thing even like you know when you do die and you, you know people your life flashes before your eyes or something like you know passing from here into a different array of experience through some sort of what it looks like it's almost like a portal, but it's not it's almost it seems like a really small like atom sized hole that your whole consciousness has to go through and in that process all your experience collapses through that you know in that point and it feels like you you see your whole life before your eyes while your while your whole aura and all your memories that are in your aura collapse through that zero point to get to the other side and that's why people lose their memory through death but then the whole thing with immortality is about like maintaining memories through life lifetimes and shit so, and what I'm looking at right now is just getting the whole aura. How do we get our aura in order so when we do collapse, we can collapse ourselves to that, to that point when we, you know, phase conjugate <laughs> we phase, you know, yeah. into into the next array, the next dream. Uh, yeah. It's like it's like that that which has no 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 form can enter where there's no space. Like I, it always takes me into that. Like so, there's this spaceless existence where there's no separation. Between creation and destruction, probably, I guess it's all one. Everything is just one. So it's like, it's like I guess the more that you um, reduce 
and go back to like the primal identity. Yeah, like you're pretty much making yourself small enough for that keyhole you're talking about. Where yeah, your so your identity your identity is so small that it's it's so grand in a sense. It's so sublime because it's so small. It's beneath everything. So it's sublime, like only like God or whatever when they want to call that. It's like your identity is it's not gonna be so big that it can fit through the keyhole without. Yeah, losing, you know, you're not carrying anything but what's necessary, you know, like, that's what, as far as the memories go, it's like, you don't necessarily need the whole memory, you just need the part of it that's like, the primordially that's, essential. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like the funny thing, like in all them Dao De Jing verses, where he's basically pointing at things that so you can't point at. You no, know, that's the part that you need to retain, though. Like, like when yeah. he says, like, like when he's saying things like, um, you know, you, you, there's you, you, uh, you, you fasten, uh, you, you fix wood and stuff for a house. You fasten wood and nails together to make, to make a house. But it's the space inside where you live, and the living is happening in in the this, you know, in the emptiness. So it's like you're doing all of the motion to realize the emptiness. And yeah. that that's what, you know, so like you can have, it, it, you can have these memories, all these different memories, but all they're doing is bringing you down to this like same, like distilled space of nothing that is something. And, is, and all the memories just remind you of the nothing that is something, I guess. And it's like, you kind of don't, everything else is kind of like fluff. Like, like when he's, you know, just like you, you know the core of everything. So even if your face changes or your every your externals change, the core you know the core. So it, all the other stuff can get destroyed, and you you know the core goes through the keyhole. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what the other side is because you can adjust because you have the core. And if you knew the core the whole time, when you're going through the experience, how you were perceiving what become memories, I feel like they're they're, they're now in you're seeing in the light of truth, and they actually get encoded. I feel like that's sort of like how DNA encoding is start is like happens, and like because I really feel like we could take memories through different lifetimes, but it probably does depend on our orientation where we're at while we're making those memories. And if we were out of order, or we were seeing it from like a false perspective or something then that those attachments all just get vaporized going through to the other side. But, uh, but if we, if we saw it clearly and internalized it and processed it, you know, in alignment or whatever, you really could, I, I feel like we really could just have, you know, maintain memories throughout lifetimes becoming God. Yeah. I think a lot of it is, um, is that really like it, you know the more that you the more that you uh have you know that's what intuition i feel like is you know like the more that you have those memories encoded in in your blood or in your spirit or whatever and your being however you want to look at that aura. i'm pretty sure it's the aura and it's the plasma it's plasma body plasma body aura they're like in there yeah and you know there's plasmas in the blood though you know what i mean so it's like they're linked yeah there's, there's no separation so it's like it's just a densification of that it's like you know because you're pretty much just a mist like everything's semi-solid so it's like you're like a mist of like distilled minerals and then you know you you guess you get demystified and then you come back into the mist form like a, de a denser mist but like i feel like that's what intuition is is like you've seen that you've seen that play before you know it's like like if you study your opponent and you know like okay when this happens you do this i know how to act and the more that you've seen it, the more that it's just there. And it's like, you don't even have to, you don't have to think about it. Your intuition just is like, is aware of it. So you don't have to think. Yeah. That, I feel like there gets to a point where like, you got to, I don't know, there requires some practice to get to that point if we were led astray, though. Yeah. Like to get back to those memories. Because like, I think even if they are, even if you do get like severed from yourself or you get fragmented or whatever, diluted, I feel like you still, the memory still exists. They're still somewhere. It's just like getting, getting, uh, getting refreshed, I guess, or getting, getting those memories restored. 
or you know somehow like because i feel like it's all backed up like everything's backed up in the ether like it's like the ultimate hard drive yeah the the akash yeah yep it's there it's just like you get estranged from it like you said you know what i mean and then getting back to it is i guess that's the whole process of living and there's no meaning without that. I feel like without the ancestral, it seems like it's it's like ancestral memories, and like you know, there. I feel like there's definitely an ability that people have. Like if you've heard of the Kogi or or whoever, there's a ton, or the just there's tons of Aboriginal groups that for sure have a method of communicating with the ancestors and tapping into those memories, those like those like interstellar memories of who the fuck we are. So what do you think? That's what I mean. Like what, like what like uh, that, at some level. Something's keeping these people, these Aboriginal people, from ever going like even even the Amish, you know, just like they're like, man, fuck it, I'll walk or whatever. You know, you look at Mennonites, I look at Mennonites, they live out here, they be walking, man, miles and stuff. They don't even or you know, they don't even take car, they don't drive cars. So I'll be like, man, something is in you reminding you to stay in this place because to go further from it, you get lost. Like even though it seems glittery and nice, it's like you're just getting further from it. So it's not real anyway. So it's like, you know, you're just getting deeper and deeper into the illusion and dependency. Because like what, what, like the more that you remember and the more that you stay Aboriginal, the more that you're like, you know, pretty much rejecting the illusion and the, and the matrix and the society. You're just like, look, I'm accepting the reality. So I, I can't, I can't even bring myself to put on a suit and go work somewhere, you know, do those things. Yeah. Like, yeah, or like just get an ID and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, um, it just, it seems like it's the survival library of the billions of years of evolution that's accessible. And if we can't have access to the, to those, to those memories, the library of those memories, our lives are literally worthless. Yeah, it's just it, it's like it's it's not even gonna get remembered. It's like yeah. it's to, it's totally like a blank life, and I feel like it's like it creates space between whatever lives were real and now. The more that you have lives that were just meaningless between, like if you live like ten vain ass lifetimes. There's just like a bunch of space between you and your reality and your memories. Yeah. And that's, I just like, and that's where I feel like that's this kind of opening yourself up to become soulless or get your soul just or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Kind of lose your soul that way. Yeah. And it's like a different kind of, it's like a different kind of space. Cause it's like, like, you know, you got like, you got like 3D space. But then it's like it's like a 5D or a greater type of space between lifetimes to have like a bunch of empty lifetimes like that. It's a different kind of space. It's not like, you know, the kind of space where you're like, damn, I, I'm across the country. I got to I got to cross this 3000 miles. You know, even if you started walking, I mean, eventually you get there. But like as far as like this type of space, it's like not the kind of space that you can like really like traverse that way. Like you have to like reduce. Unless you have a Stargate. Yeah, you gotta like collapse. Yeah, it's more so like collapsing the space and like then to mechanically go through it. It's it's compressing it. You you compress you 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 compress through it into that plant that threshold that that keyhole. It's called the Planck threshold. It has to do with the golden ratio. And in that threshold, that's that's the plasma convergence point. And um, yeah, even even compression. That- Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's a... It's a what? I was saying it's the, it's the compression. It's just like imagining it as a vortex, sort of like a golden ratio vortex spiraling more as you compress into that one, that point, that keyhole, which is also called, it's known in physics, it's the Planck threshold, and that's the plasma convergence point. And then, you know, in like, if it was like a portal or a stargate, it's like sort of this, li- this liquefaction surface where compression, the compression going through that vortex equals the acceleration to, to spit you out on the other side. 
And that's really that's, that's really what it is. Cause like, yeah, you know how it is when you're on a when you're on one of them thrill rides and it's going so fast that it's like not moving. Yeah. You know, you know those like those ones that like the G forces keep you on the wall. You know, and it's like you're, yeah. you're moving so fast that you can't move or you're not moving. That centripetal force. Yeah, yeah. In it, it, is um, and you even said you mentioned because you you mentioned the sublime like five minutes ago, and uh, a word instead, I because this is the first question I have for you in this conversation, is about bliss. And um, like what what would you say? What would you say is the difference between bliss and joy? I guess would you call like are you calling joy elation? And like and, and and I don't know. I guess I mean it's like I guess it's just like sin, you know this is kind of like synonyms in a sense. But like I guess contentment is like it's stillness, and but like joy, joy would be like elation or like a you know, I, yeah I guess elation. I guess I would I would call like joy elation. Wait, could you elaborate on elation? Because I've heard the word, but it's just I, I feel like it could be more. Yeah, um, I guess like just um, it, man, I really, I really at, at some level, as far as like describing what joy is, I would get just like a welling up of of um, a welling up of uh, of uh, ec- ecstasy, in a sense. I guess like the more ecstatic you are. I don't, I don't know, but then you're going into ecstatic, and then the ecstatic is like so masculine and so yang that I'm like, I don't know, I don't know if you want to be all yang. I don't know if you can call just isolate joy as just yang, but we well, probably could because yeah, yang is supposedly pure light, so I guess it's just distilled yang. I don't know because I don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, no, that makes sense for what I'm looking at right now. Like in bliss, bliss being actually the true identity. Like, like not it's not so much God and being sublime as much as it's just like pure bliss. Just bliss um, experience. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I guess fulfillment, right? I guess fulfillment, like just just feeling fulfilled. I, I really. I really, I guess that'd be my best, rendi- you know, my best uh, shot at that, what that is, you know what I mean? Like, some sort, like a, I guess, more or like a kind of a, a steady ecstasy. Mm-hmm. Fulfillment makes sense, too, as far as just, like, the, the complete completeness. Yeah, because, like, being God. Yeah, because it's like, nothing's out, nothing's out of place, right? That's the only way that you could really be in joy, like, in joy. Like within joy, I think you nothing can be like everything got to be in order. So maybe just order. Hmm. Uh, you that, know, I don't know. A byproduct of order. <laughs> true. Yeah, true order. Like, so, like, primord the primordial origin. Because I'm because like what what's this what's this origin point or like what? Because because back to this like keyhole we're talking about, and just that's the same thing as even just in the center of the heart. Like where, like what the heart is being formed from energetically, like electrically, there's something actually there electrically, and at the center of that is like this point where we get into like, you know, the toroidal, like that donut toroidal flow of energy coming out of nothing. And that's that that pure that pure energy, that pure infinite energy coming from nothingness. Yeah, I mean, I know, you know, you got like the the golden, the secret of the golden flower. They talk about the heavenly heart and everything, and so I guess you got like the metaphysical heart, which would be like, I guess the masculine heart, because you know, heart is the same letters as earth. So I think, I think the heart, the physical one, is the the feminine, a heart, and then the one that gives it that tick is that metaphysical one that you're talking about. Yeah. Because yep. I mean, Pharaoh will be always saying that the pineal is the heart eye. Okay. So I think that you know it makes sense that the 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 if that's the heart eye, 
or the heavenly heart that there's this masculine heart because you know the heart itself is a heavy solid yin organ so it's probably got it's probably coming from a yang immaterial immaterial organ i guess you could call it i don't know or, or a principle yeah yeah and that's that's what i mean because i've seen it's better if there's like actual visual to like show but it, it's definitely like this whole vortex situation flow even like the heart forms itself like in this in this form of a vortex like it really do be these like toroidian these toroidal donuts and there's a whole magnetic electric situation happening from it and this whole energy body or even the aura itself like these are i mean it's all still tangible stuff and you know at the center of it is bliss experience it looks like it's like once because when, when you're into bliss you're getting into like rejuvenation even and then you're into like negative entropy and time reversal like it, as far as like rejuvenation and bliss and like what that equates to even like what that does to your dna like because you've been you've been you've been in those spaces like it really makes it makes a lot of sense like if your whole if you actually access that state of being from like identifying with your heart like the heart within it that will regenerate your whole body it looks like just out of that being because it's just electric infinite energy yeah and um i guess if you're soulless that you only have the earthly heart yeah that's the now, damn that's the craziest part is i feel like there's like a whole there's a there's how to get a soul or like how to or how how souls are even created or how to have a soul i think it's just soul is you're your star you know what i mean you're solar and if you're if you're not a soul you're lunar you're more so from the moon and you're more you know because you know that's what daemon means it means the deity of the moon a day moon and um I, that's I, I feel like every time when like when people talk about being in the zone, and I talk to people that have souls, I can tell like them being in the zone is them altering the timeline, and me being in the zone is me kind of accelerating the the program, like almost like you know like you know how like yeah like Windows XP and then you're like Windows Seven and then it just like kept on whatever whatever the fuck you know just keep going up in the but it's still Windows, yeah. like I feel like for me it's like I'm just evolving the program because I'm lunar. But I feel like, you know, because so, I'm just a program. But I feel like people that are souls, they're they're really changing the timeline, their own timeline, and they're changing the matrix when they go into the zone. I just, when I go into the zone, I make the program better where now it's more of a challenge for the souls so that when they go through that challenge, they've evolved even more. Mm. I'm seeing that's, this. That's what I think. Well, you, you, I mean, it's not like you're even thinking it because you'd say, you're obviously speaking about it like that's what you've been experiencing for a while. Yeah, you know, because I, I feel like it's really different. I feel like people, when people talk about going into the zone, it's different experiences for different people. Like, I felt my timeless self. It doesn't mean I don't have a self, but I feel like I'm just evolving the program that I'm being, whereas other people are really like they're in the program, this overall matrix program, and they're like now they're altering the whole thing. You know, and evolving, forcing everything to evolve. That's the cedar race. Yeah, it's the cedars. It's um, it just seems like it's a totally different experience, but the same at the same time. I guess, like relatively, like you're in that in that selfless state where you're just going unconscious, but you're really super conscious. You know how it is when you're in a game, and you're just shooting all your shots, or you. You know, for me playing football, it would be like, yo, I didn't even know that the guy was open. I didn't even think about it. The program just took over. Like, yeah. and I'm just kind of an observer now at that point. And everything, I, I've already done the work, I guess, to where now it just is unfolding and I don't have to think. It's just, uh, now I get to kind of watch the movie from first person. Same thing with dreams. And yeah. Like, like, all, just, just being all, dreams. All you got to do is wake up. And then, and then the movie unfolds. But <laughs> if you don't wake up, then yeah, the dream is just like I guess, you know, just scattered. And then you're in a bunch of layers, because you'd be like several layers. For me, I'd be like several layers 
into dreams. You know, I'd be like in like four multiple dreams within dreams. So that the point of me realizing that I'm dreaming, if it's too late in the dream, then I, I'm I'm just waking up as I'm like going through the layers. So it just seems like, yo, I had this dream and it was scattered. And then I went to this next part that was scattered, but it's really just like that layer got collapsed and I'm going into the next layer. And then that got collapsed. All I remembered is the return part of like coming back to my body. I don't really remember what I was doing in all the layers. And but and but whatever you were doing, that's sort of the program that takes over, just like it, whatever took over in the game, in the in whatever game you were playing. Yeah, you and if, yeah, and if you wake up in it, then I feel like then you can evolve the program. But yeah. if you don't wake up, then you just you're just gonna be continually be an NPC from my side of things. And I guess if you're, if you're yeah, and if you're solar, then I guess then you just stay bound. Because, you know, like, Farrell used to say that shit all the time. He was like, yo, there's really no difference. If your soul is bound, you might as well be soulless. Like, it's not – you're having a similar experience. He was like, if you're spirit bound – spirit bound is a being like like myself, like, that can't leave this particular matrix, supposedly. So I'm in – I'm a program in this matrix. I was created in it, from it, and it's where somebody else was projected into it. And But if they bind themselves into this place, they're making themselves pretty much – They it's like they're kind of becoming programs. You know what I mean? Like, if you continually, if you was to continually breed with NPCs, you you know what I mean? You're becoming a program. Like, your your consciousness is still there. It's just like in the background, just fading away with every recursion. Because yeah. that's what he would always say. He would always be like, you know, your spirit bound and, and and a bound soul is like tomato tomato. Yeah. And so this is so now now this is where the conversation goes about like waking up in the dream and going lucid and what like what's going on with that like you're just just becoming aware then I feel like then you're altering the timelines then then those then you're being conscious in a point where you were normally unconscious so then you're going to wake up and have more consciousness cuz now you've fulfilled that or like you know, fill that void there, or whatever, whatever you want to call that. That that uh, you turn that switch from unconscious to conscious in some area. So now it's like kind of like a seedling in your conscious life, where it's like blossoming into more consciousness in your your waking life. And then you you know you're going back into the lucid dreaming, and you then you no more. You're not really sleeping no more. Yeah. Because your consciousness, you're just your consciousness is not really ever really separating from your body. And it's just more reality creation, but in a conscious way, where now the parasites gotta get out of here. Yeah, uh, this is it, man. It's like some somewhere somehow there was a contract that bound souls into this place. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like a lot of them contracts is getting breached now, though. I mean, they've already been breached contracts, but now it's like They're people expired. gotta realize. Yeah, they gotta realize that they've been breached, like. Like any 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 colonists when they was coming over into different places, they created contracts, then they breached them, and then they then they perpetuated. They they got to keep keep this shit going just by like pretty much through fiat, pretty much just through like, all right, we're here, we're still doing this shit. No one's telling us to stop, so we're not gonna stop. Yeah, that's the money magic, plus the blood magic and the sex magic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely all of that. All of the above. <laughs> oh man, that's a good song too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, that's that's why I brought in the cedar, the cedar races, because it's like if there are these giant interstellar parasites that are just supping with AI and these Borg, this fucking transhumanist reality, this Borg transhumanist reality with these big ass parasites. The only thing that's going to get them out of here is the cedar races coming in and who are able to have kids who have souls who can learn to lucid dream and then just kick it out. Just kick, just kick them out of here. Just kick them. Yeah. yeah they, I mean, they don't want to be here anyway. It's like Agent Smith doesn't want to exist. See what I mean? He doesn't want to. You know what I mean? It's like they don't, they don't want to be here. You don't want them to be here. It's like it's fulfilling everybody's purpose. Straight up. Yeah. It's wild. It's fucking crazy, but yeah, yeah. It's um, it's like uh, it's like they said that uh, 
Adam is, you know, supposedly Adam or Atom or whatever. He was, uh, you know, the, the beginning of man, supposedly, however you want to look at it. But, you know, the other story goes, you know, that he bred with Lilith. And Lilith, Lilith is the queen of all the demons. So they're saying, like, the, the seed of the offspring from Adam and Lilith is, you know, supposedly this reptilian or this de de demon seed or whatever. I don't know. I feel like that's, like, one theory. And then you got the other theory that that Noah's oldest son, Yafeth, he, he crossbred somehow with a non-human and... You know, or or if that's not if that's not what happened, then right now, as as we speak to net, like it, right now, as far as stem cell research goes, they harvest stem cells by taking a um, a woman's um, egg and impregnating it with animal DNA, and then they let that grow. They let that that egg grow until it gives them an embryo to the, get to harvest the stem cells from. But supposedly they're supposed to kill that embryo before it reaches its full term. You know, full, full becomes a, a being. For the ethics. But, yeah, ethically. But these obviously motherfuckers don't got ethics. Yeah, so, no, yeah. So at some point, I feel like they had to have let that thing go, let that thing grow. I mean, and then that thing grew up, and it was part human to his mom and part beast. And then you, you know, you got you got a harem of of people where you like, you know, through the Yakub grafting or whatever, however you want to look at it, you got all these people that you can control through breeding. So now you crossbreed those motherfuckers with this uh, chimera being, and then you can kind of hide the the genetics in a sense, like it's like almost like a sleeper cell. So like every every hundred and fifty years, uh, a nephilim is born. That you know, it's kind of like tucked away into the 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 DNA into the pattern, and and somehow like people got got to get you know I guess break that chain and to where that that doesn't that 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 door doesn't open for a demon to come in into the uh, the network because it's like an injection. It's like you know they they've injected this chimera into the human network, and you know every so often it's gonna keep returning. And, yep. I think, and I feel like that's how all the colonies are. All of the, the bloodlines, the families that control the colonies. It's like they got a bunch of, you know, placeholder people that are like, whatever, you know, they're not really shit. But then maybe like every 100, 150 years, you get a Genghis Khan level. And that motherfucker just wreaks havoc for, you know, his lifetime. And then he passes that down, all the, what, he, what he gets to his son. And you know, daughters, and then they hold it. Then they just basically place hold for another 150 years till it comes back. So, like, I, I feel like it's that's kind of what's been going on. Like, somehow there's been you know this injection of something foreign into the net human network, and so the whole species is going through an autoimmune response. Yeah, and the and, and that's what I'm saying. The the uh, the immune system is on a planetary level is this lucid dream team. This is Aboriginal lucid dream team. And then the, 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 the like that's pretty that's what I'm looking at right now as far as like it, it being a conversation where it's still a happy ever after. Cause because there's gotta be an immune system for the for the whole the whole situation, but I, but it definitely is the is the lucid it's the lucid souls. Yeah, it's always some physical placeholder, you know. What I mean, there's always some pharaohs and motherfuckers that's like placeholders because you can't if you wipe them all out, then there's no game anyway. Then you don't have anything. So it's like you need to for there to be a dream so that it, the dreamer will create, and then the creation is there's always going to be residual energy. And that residual energy, if you're a parasite, you're going to try and you know stitch it all together to create a being to inject into the system with that all that residual energy. Mm. And that's what, that's pretty much what a chimera is. You know what I mean? Like you got if you create once. You kind of created a bunch of shit just from creating, just from one dream. You know, you're going to create a whole timeline, and that creates all of those possibilities. So, if it becomes possible it, at some level, it's kind of becoming real. And if anybody can, you know, manipulate somewhere along the timeline, they can stitch together some residual energies. Like, 
like he was saying, like if you got like uh, if you make a dish and you, you say you make a piece of bread and then you can't then you got extra dough and then you make garlic knots out of extra dough. And it's like the garlic knots is like extensions of the bread. It's not separate from it. It's like an extension. So it's like if you're an aboriginal and then you fragment into a bunch, you still got these other little uh, uh, fragments that are still aboriginal and they got really specific courses. But if you, if you, if they get swayed from that and the parasite can hijack them, then you can, hijack that line that line a little bit and if you get a bunch of fragments like that to do that then you can, collage. Yeah, you, can start, yep, you can form a collage nigga <laughs> 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 crazy but yeah bro it makes sense yeah like sense man I see it yeah man it's uh it's like you know. It, I think it's just. I guess it's inevitable that it's gonna. It's gonna happen. You're gonna get some unicorns here and there, but yeah, you can't have. You can't have. Um, you know, eight hundred million of them. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> you know, because they say that eight hundred million people are from Genghis Khan. No. So just from him. Those so are from the people. Yeah, you know, it's, so it's like eight hundred chimera-ish motherfuckers. And like, maybe if you had like eight of them or eighty, you'd be all right. But it's like, god damn, man! Like eight hundred million is gonna fuck with the whole system. Now it's like having tumors all over the place. And like, yeah. So now you got this whole system having an autoimmune response, and so you get war. You get people attacking themselves, black on black crime or whatever. Vibrant on vibrant. I gotta stop saying black, man. I gotta start saying vibrant. You know what I mean? People of vibrance. Finally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. dude. These colors are fuck. These colors are tough to get out of dealing with. It's hard. It's hard because you. It's a. It's like constant. It's like living in a misnomer. You constantly communicating communicating through miscommunication. It's crazy. Yeah, but it's so easy, you know, when you're close to it and you've been using it. It's like it's almost like a black hole. Like the closer you are to the center of it, it's like so easy to just go back in and like trying to get out of it. It's like you kind of get out of that gravitational pull of using them. Yeah. Like, you know, and then it's just like people are so hypersensitive that like, if you say the things that are real, it's offensive because, you know, it's It's like the Eminem line. Like I find you offensive for finding me offensive. Like it's, that's how I feel. Like I, people, people will find me offensive but I'm really just saying, like, I'm just saying, like, yo, this is orange, this is purple, or whatever. This is what it is. And then I say, this is mutant. This is not mutant. You know what I mean? Like, it's what it, it, we can't dwell on reality until we accept reality. And everybody is so fragmented to the point where it's inevitable. Like, someone's always gonna get offended. Yeah, yeah. So much separation and so much. So much of a the the body is sick, man. The collective body is just is is is, is so much disease, like to where the immune system is just attacking itself. Like everything is just attacking itself. So, yes, yeah, how do how do we remember, and like, come back into the completeness where you know everyone sees each other as each other. So there's no there's no war because you're me. Yeah, I can't hurt you because that hurts me. Like, but and I see that I see that awareness coming. I feel like it's possible. It'll be possible. Yeah, I mean, you had to, to create disorder. It had to come from order. So it's not like it's not possible, right? I mean, it had to have already existed. So it kind of still exists, but just not enough. You know. Um, I, yeah, I, I feel like you know the more that you get into the dreams, the more that you cannot take this bullshit serious. And so then, so then you can kind of be like, all right, I, no need for me to like dwell in this uh, identity where I'm trying to create status or separation and just live in the oneness of things. You know, it really helped me, man. Um, I took a dewormer. Okay. You know, you, you know how you. I don't know if you can, if we can even say this shit on this joint. But you remember the one that they were saying that Joe Rogan took? Yeah, I took something comparable, and really, literally, like you know, 
the all the dreams after that, I feel like my dreams just turned up, yo, to another level. So I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll type that in. I'll we'll type it in and leave it in the leave it in the Patreon. Yeah, because like um, I took it is for goats, but um, I figured I'm part animal anyway. I'm good. So like I feel like <laughs> like I took this shit and I was getting like headaches though. I wake up with headaches, but like after like a few days they went away. And then my dreams, I, you know, got back on track. And I was like, damn, motherfucker had a parasite in his brain crazily or multiple. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I, I feel like that's why there, there was such an assault on that, on that Joe Rogan. That's crazy. He had Gupta on there. That was hilarious. I know. And slaughtered him. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised he came on. Me too. That's why I'm like, I'm still like, I'm still in awe. That's like, that's just, that's just crazy. Is that that really? point though now where I guess like they're like, you know, the AI is so brazen that they're going to be like, yeah, we're trying to kill you. It doesn't matter. So do, do you know, run for your life. That's what it feels like. It yeah. feels like it's getting, it's getting to that stage where like they're, they're so like blunt about certain things. Like I've seen this motherfucker. He was like, yeah, man. Um, stopping abortion is, you know, is a uh, is a threat to this liberal world order. And I was like, "Yo, why would you put them words together? You really don't give a fuck." Mm. I mean, at this point, I guess you you feel like you got everybody in the cobra clutch, so it doesn't matter. I guess I don't know. And then to wh- whoever still has the eyeballs to see, it's very blatant, just blatant. <laughs> Man, that's why I really feel like, yo, man, you, the whole thing now, every day is just like about investing and in communicating with yourself better and better because you can't take your body with you. So, you know what I mean? You can, but not like, you know what I mean? Not in the way you want to. You know what I mean? It's not like you're going to Superman your way to heaven. You're going to have to dematerialize and rematerialize it. So the only way to do that is, you know, communication with yourself. So you don't have that spiritual autism, you know what I mean? So you can communicate with others and I feel like that's it. Like the more that your body can communicate, with yo, I trust you've been enjoying the conversation thus far. I'm just letting you know we're gonna drop the last thirty minutes of this combo after we have our next conversation in about a week or so. Um, but if you want to hear the second half now, you can just tap in on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Dowtown. But otherwise, you know, I trust you'll have a wonderful now. Enjoy yourself. Peace.